We're here in Delhi. It is our first full day and we are looking forward to explore. That place is pretty refrigerative with how we feel right now. Where we're staying is not the most pedestrian friendly. We have like six inches, and sometimes we have no inches. <laughs> the cars just go around you. But it works, I guess. That was an official song. We found it. Yay! Another train. In an ATM. Let's see if it works. It's really clean down here. It was interesting getting tickets because only one machine took card, and but it works. And now we have these two little like tokens. We just like put it above. We got in, and now I think we give them away when we take out. This is just like the same thing that we had when we visited the temple yesterday. Interesting. It's nice. Like it doesn't smell. It's really great metro system so far. Just made it. That subway is awesome. Now we're gonna try to find some money so we can pay our guide. We just got some food, but more importantly, we just got some money. It took us like four different tries out of four different ATMs, multiple different button combinations. And food. We have no idea what it is though. And we're late, so that's why we're walking really fast. First Indian street food. Yeah. Maybe we'll get fresh ones next time. <laughs> This street in open air market is called Chandni Chok, or in English, Silver Street. Originating in the 17th century by Shah Jahan, it is bustling with non-stop action as people from all walks of life work and sell their trade. It's organized by craft and you'll find different offerings on different streets. This is the first market that you will be seeing. This market is dedicated to shoes and later on it's dedicated to I have like 50 to 100 shops selling only silver and a bit of other jewelry but silver is the main thing. So this street is in construction. It's another it's a reason why there's so much movement going on. It's one of the largest open markets in India. But this is nothing compared to the activity that comes around in walking. <laughs> this is quiet. <laughs> and there is a monkey. <laughs> and also there is a monkey. <laughs> uh, yes! Wow, look at him. <laughs> This street is like really rich with history and I would have never guessed that at all. I'd hate to be an electrician working on that. Also, we see an inspiring mix of different religions. Other Sikh people. So, you know, the one special thing in this religion is that uh, 
neither men nor women can cut their hair ever in their entire life. Because they believe that hair is something which grows on you since the day you are born. You can't cut your finger, you can't cut your hand, you can't cut your legs. How can you cut your hair? They are a part of your body. Interesting thing about this church is that everything written inside that's in Urdu and not in English. Here is a free bird hospital. New Delhi is the second most bird rich city in the world with over 200 unique species. You can bring any bird in, but the condition is that it must be set free after it's healed. That was a great tour. I think we learned quite a bit. It's just so hectic, it's, it's hard to take it all in. I think you're gonna probably stop every minute. And now we're gonna go get some food. That is amazing. Oh my god. It's like weirdly sweet because of the yogurt. And it's so savory with all these different things that you put in. I don't know what it is, but it is really good. Very good. So for about six, less than six dollars, we just got two very large boxes of Indian sweets. We don't know what's in them yet, so stay tuned. <laughs> It's pretty representative of how we feel right now. We just got back to our hotel after going to the train station where we um, ran into a tourist scam. Fortunately for us, we did not get um, go through with the scam, but we'll tell you about that whole story later. As for right now, what we're doing is we're both on our computers, sitting on the bed, working on what do we want to see in India, what do we want to do, um, and how to get there, which is primarily we want to use trains, and we're really excited to use the trains here in India. Um, and yeah, so that's kind of what we're working on. And in the meantime, we have some, some sweets, which are some traditional Indian sweets. And um, when we went to the store earlier today, they were boxing up tons of these. We think, from what we understand, for celebrating holy. It's like a traditional thing to like give people sweets. So anyway, we're going to unwrap these and enjoy them now. Mm. Mm. Cashew sweets. In that box. We have a whole other box. Yeah. I don't even know what's in that one. We have no idea. I think that's more of the savory stuff, like the crackers and stuff. I don't know. Yum. So today we've literally done nothing but plan. I slept for 12 hours yesterday. Yeah. That didn't make it in the vlog, I don't think. No. <laughs> we've booked a lot of trains and we've booked a lot of Airbnbs for the next 10 days. Yeah. We're booked out for the next 10 days, which is really nice considering we almost got scammed yesterday, but our spidey senses were tingling. Oh, look at these birds. Great. Yeah, and then I spent about eight or ten hours yesterday and this morning figuring out our time in India. So we know what we're going to see and where we're going. <laughs> and we also went on an errand today and we got some things at the pharmacy to protect against the coronavirus yes. on the trains. So yeah. we're going to do our best. Yeah, hopefully it works out. So now we're going to try to find a family restaurant that we saw across the way. But it's crazy here. 
Honking is the language of the people. I think we found dinner. My bath's on fire. And this is mild. <laughs> we ran out of drink too. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not big enough. What do you think? First uh, time eating outside of the hotel today. Great. It was very good. We um, we said mild, but my my lips are on fire. Well, he looked over after I ordered. He looked over. He says, less spicy. Yes, less yeah. spicy. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's safer to walk in the street than the sidewalk. There's no lights on the sidewalk. In the street, you have the car lights. Seems counterintuitive, but everybody else is doing it. So one of the benefits of that scamming experience yesterday was that it caused us to spend the last 24 hours planning our time in India. So now it's really great because we know what we're doing. <laughs> That's the bright side. Yeah. On that note, we have our first Indian train tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. It's our first train of about 20 trains during our time here in India. So we need to, so we need to pack and get to bed. <laughs> yeah. Now for the story of how we almost got scammed yesterday. It, it all started after we had finished up our morning tour. We only planned to stay in Delhi for our initial round for two days. So that next day, which was is today, we had to leave. We were trying to book our train out of Delhi, which we wanted to book for today, and so we went to the Indian Rail Station because I wasn't able to book it online. Um, just kept getting a bunch of errors on the website. So we went to the train station, and before we had found, went to the counter or anything, somebody approached us, and he said, oh, hello, how are you doing? You know, can I help you guys find something? And we're like, I was literally sleeping in the Uber to the train station because I was so tired. So my, I wasn't really thinking fully straight. You know, it was a long day for us. And so he was helping us out. Um, and he was like, no, you can't book those train tickets here because we're going to another state um, in India. So he's like, you need to go to the tourist bureau and said, take, take a tuk-tuk, it's only 40 um, rupees, it's nothing more, don't worry about it. So we just came to the rail office to buy some tickets. I think we came to the wrong place. So now we are gonna take our first tuk tuk to the tourism office. We'll see. So we went out and then some guy approached us like tuk tuk? Are you saying he said um tourist brew? We're like, yeah, that's where we're going. And then he took us to the tuk tuk driver, didn't say anything to the tuk tuk driver, and they drove off. And then I was thinking in the tuk tuk, like, I hope that wasn't a scam. <laughs> Because it was like everything was like too smooth after talking to the guy, and we never talked to any official. Maybe. Well, it is a pretty good deal, actually. It is a good deal for us, but I'm just saying, like. Yeah, I mean, like. So we ended up going to the tourist office and it was like a government building. Government building. It had government um, bureau, or bureau of tourism, government something on the letters, on the exterior of the building. We go in and um, we sit down at a desk with this guy and there's other people in this office too. So it sort of looks official, kind yeah. of, but also sort of not. Right. Like some, so it was off of an alleyway and but you never know. And so at that point, we're talking with this guy and we're telling him our plans, which are very loose at this point. And then he basically tells us, you know, oh, you can't book trains like that. Um, they book out a week in advance. And yeah. he said, you, you don't want to go where you're going. You want to go here because it'll be a lot hotter here in the future. So you want to go this way. So he's basically kind of trying to shift our agenda to his agenda. And we're, you know, we don't really know. We haven't done any planning of India. Before we got here <laughs> and so we were planning to do in our next place actually we were going to book a few extra days and, and book a lot of india so anyway 
Jen kind of felt like something was off. So then I texted Elliot underneath the desk and said, I think this is a scam. And I proceeded to direct the conversation into saying how I think that we need to go home and talk about this and kind of get our plan set. And that's when he says, oh, why don't you, have you eaten yet? And we were kind of hungry, but kind of not hungry. We're like, no, not really. He said, well, go, go to this place around the corner, think about it and then come back. So we're like, okay. We've actually eaten in our hotel quite a bit, so we wanted to try other foods. So we said, okay, we'll go to your place. It was a family restaurant. And so we went there and we were kind of directed by somebody out to make sure we went to the right place, which was kind of strange, but in the moment you're thinking, oh, you know, they're just helping us out, you know? And so we go there, we sit down, and then another man sits next to us and plays the friend and talks about, oh, where are you going in India? Oh, well, make sure you book in advance. Oh, I know a great tourist office you should go to. And we're like, oh, thank you, thank you. I think we're just gonna think about it. And there was another guy that, that was his partner that kind of talked to us as well. And he left, it was very pushy. And so at that point I was thinking like, this is definitely a scam. And so then we like, okay, thank you so much. And we left the restaurant the food was pretty good actually. So it wasn't that bad. We got a good meal out of it, which was great. And then we proceed to walk out of the restaurant, call an Uber to go back to our hotel. He proceeds to, to walk out of the restaurant and show us on his phone where the office is. Meanwhile, during lunch, Elliot looked on his phone and didn't see any bureau, tourism, mm -hmm. government office that we were supposedly at. So we ended up just saying, okay, sure. We got in our Uber and went back to our hotel. We still weren't completely sure if it was a scam or not. So this morning after sleeping for 12 hours, <laughs> I just did like a little bit of research and I found on Lonely Planet like details of the same tour from like it was 14 years ago and then on YouTube um, I had seen it there too. So it is a scam and I'm lucky that we didn't fall for it because if you do fall through the scam basically they charge you like 10 times what it costs to go somewhere and they build a whole trip, trip package for you. If you get it, it's like a, you know, you paid 10 times too much and if it's even there. A couple of things that we learned from this experience was, one, do a little bit more research. We took an Uber to the, route to the train station because I just assumed that that's where you go for the tickets. If I had done more research and found out that that definitely was the place or it definitely wasn't, I would have been less vulnerable to this type of scam. And then the other thing that we learned is if something feels uncomfortable, we should just go home, sleep, look it up online, kind of get to a comfort zone where you're not being led around, because that's really what they're doing. They're leading you from one step to the other. And then you think about it, did I make that step? Did I want to go to the tourism office in, in the first part? I don't know. And that's when you're being led and that's when you can kind of go into a place that scammers can take advantage of you. So we've learned lessons and we're excited to continue exploring. Hey, pepperonis. How's it going? Oh, hey, pup. Got your bottle of booze. <laughs> so, food stall didn't work. They only had tea. I said tali, but he thought I said chai. That's why. But it's okay. He said to go to McDonald's if we're hungry. <laughs> <laughs> it's serious. On, on that note, <laughs> on that note, <laughs> say what you're gonna you're say. You're supposed to say. <laughs> on that note, tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. is the first, hey, what am I saying? Starting. On that note, tomorrow morning, we have our first of 20 trains at 5 a.m. <laughs> you did that I know, I did. Are you looking forward? <laughs> Look forward. We knew we were leaving Delhi. Are you sighing? I'm just trying to look at you because I feel awkward <laughs> smiling to camera about our scam story. Okay. We got scammed.